Hello guys, my name is Rush Badger, and I would like to start off by showing you what I personally think is probably the greatest draw shot of all time. Now, obviously I'm not talking about that shot. What happened was, I got a bit of target fixation and some tunnel vision while I was firing a straw at a guy across the map. This guy came along and decided to burn me in half with his little repair torch. I did a cartwheel. And then he starts to violently teabag at a very high revolution per minute. And then all of a sudden, ba boom The straw came all the way back around. Now, I was just as surprised as he was. Yeah, he was like, what? I don't, I don't understand. Even a teammate saw and he was like, there's no escape. He was, pretty, he was pretty intense about it, but look at this. If you look behind him, just look, look over his right shoulder, or his left shoulder now. It loop-de-loops all the way around and then... That's what you get, home girl, for teabagging all the way. You what, mate? I, not Mountain Dew, mate. That's just pure luck. And I don't even want to say that's really that lucky. It is like lucky people getting lucky don't ever really get that lucky. That is outrageously just the fact that it's just coincidental that not only did he have time, or did that rocket actually have the flight time to come all the way back around after looping back, but he was sitting there teabagging for long enough to actually stay in the same spot that would kill him. And Moving on to this specific clip, I thought it was very odd how I've never been in one of those instances where it is down to the wire, down to like a single ticket that you might win by. We were down by, I believe, 200 to 300 tickets. The earlier part of this shadow play file really didn't work out very well. The quality was so terrible. I don't I didn't even want to show it because it was almost it was almost like you were watching on a VCR or something, but this last section right as the game ended. It worked out very well. Now, I was trying to tell my entire team, don't spawn, but it turned into Dopton Spawn. It, I was really trying to just cap this flag and just stay on this flag and revive everybody that I could. I pick up the revives, or the revive paddles. I hit the guy. We both end up dying to this dude, but guess what happens? Win by a single ticket. Now, watch the chat go nuts. And this one guy got so mad, just I'll, I'll just I'll just let let him show you exactly how butthurt he is. I just love how that's that's totally what I expected from you guys. If somebody says in chat, stop saying wrecked, it's so stupid, you're stupid, go die, like something very childish like that. Of course, you guys followed up with wreck, 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 all the way down in chat, like five or six times. And the next thing I wanted to briefly talk about is the Rorschach's one. In my opinion, it's not overpowered. Now that I've had some time to use it really extensively, and then I've had some time away from it, because obviously I haven't, I haven't played Final Stand in a few days here, I can easily say, it is not at all overpowered. I, I know so many people were crying about it just because it's a new little novelty that they don't really understand all that well, but the rate of fire is super low. I mean, that goes hand in hand with the reload, but at the same time, think about this. Okay, if you think this is so overpowered because, oh, I can one-shot somebody across the map, think about the pickup 50 cal. I'm not even joking when I would say any day of the week, any map, doesn't matter where we're talking about, I would always rather have a 50 cal with a 6 or an 8 time scope than I would have a Rorsch. I mean, I guess the Rorsch, it, like I said, it's a bit of a novelty item. It's, oh man, I'm shooting a railgun. And obviously the whole railgun thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense because he's sticking a bullet in there and it's, there's like a casing and a primer and it's, I don't think that's the way that railguns work, dice. But regardless, you can see I would much rather have a 50 cal because it still kills in one shot, right? It doesn't have to charge up. It has an extremely high rate of fire. You can just rap, boom, boom, boom. Even in close range, it's not like a Rorsch where you have to wait for it to charge up, then fire, then you've got like an eight and a half second reload. It's just, you can spam it over and over and over again, and it serves that same purpose of it kills in one shot. So the whole argument and all the people that I heard in the comment section about the Rorsch being massively OP, I just, I don't agree with you at all, and I don't really know what you're talking about. I mean, I guess you can make the blanket argument of, Yes, all these pickups are overpowered, the 50 cal is overpowered, the Rorsch is overpowered, but I'm going to say, if you're going to nerf anything, or you're going to balance anything, I would nerf the M82A3 before I would do anything else with the Rorsch, just because of purely the one-shot killing power of the 50 cal, I mean, it's not even debatable that it's so much better than the Rorsch. It's just, 
The roars were something that was new and undiscovered, and people just instantly thought as soon as they saw it. They already made this this statement that, oh, it's gotta be overpowered. It's a railgun, it has a charge up, it looks like an alien weapon. I think people are, are sort of just mystified by it when they're not really thinking about the concrete ability of the weapon. When the M82A3 is way better, I would take that any day of the week. Just I, I just don't get the whole Rorsch argument. Now, that's not to say that it isn't fun, and I understand that it has a bit of an advantage when it comes to vehicles, but I think even in that case that, oh, the 50 cal can't really do the same thing, and that, that 720, mom get the camera, yeah, that was a bit of an excessive move there, but I do understand that the Rorsch has an advantage against vehicles, but even so, that advantage against vehicles, it's balanced out. So the 50 cal will always do better against infantry in general, Obviously, it's a little bit weaker against vehicles, but I don't by any means think that the Rorsch is overpowered. The the reload is extremely long, the obviously limited ammo capacity, I just don't think it is at all overpowered. Now, the SC-42 obviously is pretty broken OP, but they patched it, so you can no longer toss people around the map like the intro. I have some more footage of that, by the way. It's kind of like, I want to give it a, a, a fair send-off or a fair farewell just because I miss it so much now. It's... Now, I mean, you see how it was overpowered. This is all pre-patch or pre... It was about midway through while we were playing CTE that I noticed that, oh, no, these vehicles aren't bouncing around violently anymore and I can't quite snipe people across the map. So they patched it fairly rapidly. But I just wanted to show you guys exactly what it was beforehand. How it's even bad with the Phantom Syndrome. I don't know if a lot of you know what I'm talking about when I say the Phantom Syndrome, but... There are a lot of emplacements, like look, he killed me and I still fired while I was dead. Like it's some kind of phantom syndrome on, I know the rib boat is one, I think the attack boat is another, then the SC-42 is the same thing, but that's just hilarious. See how violently it would just torque vehicles in different directions? I I do kind of miss that, but at the same time, I understand why it needed to be patched, just because it was so incredibly overpowered. Like even that, that did, this doesn't, that doesn't even destroy the vehicle, like that did not even destroy, no, no, no. There's another point in time where Oftentimes, you can get people out of the vehicle without damaging it. Like, you can blast some guy out of it, get the kill with the SC-42, and that guy's just hiding in the puddle. What are you doing, Carl? But that's another thing that was just so broken about the SC-42, was that over and over and over again, I could blast somebody out of a vehicle without the vehicle even taking damage or exploding. So that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, especially when I didn't have an angle. Like, I understand that sometimes you can have it where you can shoot people out of a... Any kind of helicopter, for example, with a sniper rifle, but at the same time, that doesn't matter. Like, that that, that has to go th right through the window. It's not like you can hit it from any angle. And this just got more and more fun. I mean, I'm obviously going to miss this. I understand that it was not exactly the most balanced thing. It, it could get very annoying if you don't want to be bounced around like a bouncy castle, but the SC-42 was the final thing that I wanted to speak about. So hopefully this has been somewhat enlightening. I just wanted to give you a brief overview as to what I thought about some of the changes that they made in CTE and some of the, the my general thoughts about what I think about Final Stand before it comes out. Just now that I've had time to digest it, I'm not all caught up in it now that I've had time to sort of compare it to the regular vanilla battlefield. But I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later.